Welcome to the musculoskeletal video series. In each video, we will demonstrate a complete joint-specific physical examination. These examinations would be appropriate for a patient with a specific musculoskeletal complaint. Hi, welcome to the musculoskeletal knee physical examination. I'm Dr. Karen Newcomer, a physiatrist at the Mayo Clinic, and this is Matt, my model today. The first thing we do on the examination is inspect. We want to look for whether they have an increased valgus. Normally patients have about five degrees of valgus, but an increased valgus would look like that, knock kneed, or an increased varus, which would be bow-legged. You also want to watch the patient walk and make sure that they don't have antalgia where they favor one side and don't put as much weight on it. I'll do some functional testing too to see if they have any pain with those testing or to see if they have any functional movement patterns that look abnormal. I like to do a, just a squat, so Matt, go ahead and just do a double leg squat for me. And I assess whether he has any pain with that or whether he's doing it with good lumbopelvic motion and hip motion. A single leg squat is also a very important and helpful test. What we're looking for for this is whether they have good control of their knee or not. If they don't have good control of their knee, their knee often comes in and we call that genu valgum. So go ahead and show us a good single leg squat first, as good as you can do. Excellent. And see how his knee comes straight down and then go ahead and show us a, a, a poor single leg squat. See how his knee goes into valgus? That would, that would be something that would need to be corrected. Thessaly's test is a good test for meniscal tears. The way we do it is you hold on to the patient. I'm going to have you stand on one leg and just bend about, yep, to about 20 degrees. And then I'm going to have you just rotate your knee back and forth. Good. And, and then you'll ask him where the pain is, medial or lateral, and it's a good test for a, a meniscal pathology. For the knee, inspecting and palpating, sitting with the knee flexed is a good position. You want to look for an effusion, which you will often see in, in two places when they're sitting. One is just lateral to the patella. You'll see a, a bulge, lack of, lack of definition. The other is in the superior pouch. You'll see, you can see a, a fluid there. When I palpate, anteriorly, the first structure I typically palpate is the patellar tendon. Really common place for, for tendinopathy. And you want to palpate under the tendon. That's a common place where patients will be tender on both sides. The tibial tuberosity right there is just at the, at the insertion of the patellar tendon. Medially, this red line right here indicates the joint line. The joint line is very important because it's where the medial meniscus lives. It's about 70% sensitive for a meniscal tear if there's tenderness over that joint line. You want to make sure you palpate all the way from just medial to the patellar tendon. You'll feel a divot and you want to follow that divot all the way around posteriorly to palpate the entire joint line. The medial collateral ligament is another important structure, this blue line that is located medially. Typically, the tenderness is the medial femoral condyle, but you want to palpate that entire structure. Another structure medially is the pezanserin bursa. It's where a number of tendons insert, and this is another common area of pathology. It's in a flat spot, about a centimeter medial and a centimeter inferior to the tibial plateau. As with the medial side, the lateral joint line is very important. It's this black line, and that's where the lateral meniscus lives. Again, you want to make sure that you palpate just lateral to the patellar tendon, where there's a divot, and follow that all the way back posteriorly to see if there's any tenderness. Next, we'll go to the lateral collateral ligament which starts on the lateral femoral condyle and extends both onto the tibia and the fibula. This is that, the blue line. You can often actually feel that structure, unlike the medial collateral ligament. You can feel it, particularly in the, in the region of the joint line. 
The iliotibial band is a structure that is very, a very common spot of pain laterally. The best place to palpate it is just above the lateral femoral condyle where you will feel a, a rope-like structure. And then once you feel it, you can, you can follow it down. I can continue to feel it here. Now it gets lost, but I know that it inserts anteriorly onto Gertie's tubercle. Typically, though, it's most tender up above and at the lateral femoral condyle. The fibular head is another place you should palpate. And you can actually cup your hand, and that it will, it will, you'll feel that cup on your hand right there. The patellofemoral joint is a very common area to have pain. Therefore, it's very important to palpate the patella. The best way to do that is to move the patella medially and feel under it. This is the patellar facet. See if that's tender. And then move the patella laterally and palpate under it to see if that's tender. Range of motion of the knee is simple. I'll usually just do it passively. Again, though, make sure that you bring the knee all the way into full flexion and compare it with the other side to see if there's a difference from side to side. Next, we'll move on to the stability special tests. And these are assessing knee stability. For these tests, it's really important to keep the femur stable. You don't want this femur going into internal and external rotation. The way I like to do it is use my leg as a support below, my hand as a support above, so that this leg is not moving. I'm going to show you the Lachmans first. The Lachmans take some practice, but the way we do it is stabilize the thigh, bring my hand under his tibia, and then it's a quick posterior to anterior motion perpendicular with the tibia. So it's just a quick jerk forward like that. You don't have to use that much stress, but it's just a, it's just a quick jerk, and you can feel an endpoint. If, if the patient has an ACL disruption, you won't feel an endpoint. It'll just be squishy. For varus and valgus stress, we, put, we use the same position, keeping this thigh stable. For valgus stress, we're checking the MCL. And the way we do that is just hold the thigh and bring the foot out. And again, I'm feeling for any instability, and I'm also asking him if he has pain. For varus stress, we bring the, the foot in. Again, stabilize the, the, the femur, and then just bring the foot in. You don't want to rotate that, that thigh at all. If a patient feels unstable with varus or valgus stress at 30 degrees, which is the position we should be in now, we do the same thing at, with the knee completely extended. And again, we give them a valgus stress and a varus stress. If they are unstable with the knee straight, that indicates that there's another structure involved besides the collateral ligaments, typically the ACL. The McMurray's is also a difficult test that takes some practice. I'm going to show it to you slowly. Although when you see people do it, you'll probably see them doing it fairly quickly. First, you put your, your fingers over their medial and lateral joint lines so you can feel for any clicking. For the medial meniscus, we are going to externally rotate, abduct the hip, and give them a varus stress. And what that's doing is it's stressing, the, it's compressing the medial joint line and we're trying to catch any meniscal tears. And what we're feeling for, we're going from flexion all the way to full extension. And we're feeling for a click. And we're also asking him if he has pain. Technically, a positive test is pain and a click. The lateral is just the same, except you're internally rotating, you're adducting, and you're giving him a valgus stress and you're going from flexion to extension. And again, you're putting your fingers over the lateral joint line. And I also put my fingers over the medial joint line, too, to see if there's any clicking. And again, a pain in a click is a positive test. The next tests are for the ACL and the PCL. If someone has a PCL tear, 
they're going to have a, what's called a sag sign. What you'll see is typically the tibial tubercle is a little bit forward of the femoral condyles, but you'll see it actually posterior to that if the PCL is torn. For the PCL, the best test is the posterior drawer. And the way I do that is I actually sit on his foot so his foot doesn't move. I hold my hands on his tibial plateaus and then I just give him a posterior force. You can do it pretty hard actually. And if someone has a PCL tear, it will move and that will indicate that there's a tear. I will also do an anterior drawer, although this is not as sensitive as the Lachman's. And for that, I will just bring him anteriorly like that. And that, like I said, is not, it's not as easy and, and as accurate as a Lachman's test. Thank you for watching the knee physical examination video.